What's up, guys? This is the Osmo.com Night Shift Podcast. We have got an awesome slate for Friday, July 27th. 15 games. We'll have a ton of content coming out for this, including this podcast. Uh, Spotlight hitters, pitchers, stacks. Being it is a Friday, Osmo will have his top stack article where he lays out the chances according to his models uh, that a stack will be the highest scoring on the night. Um, So that is a premium feature. We also have the ownership projections, rankings, which are also premium features. You can go on Osmo.com, click on premium to see more information about that. Uh, Strategy video with myself and Josh tomorrow morning. That's free with a chat. Same thing uh, at night right before lock. Friday live streams always get pretty fun with Chris and Josh. So go in there and chat. Uh, ask questions, give analysis, do whatever you want to do. Um, let's talk about the 15 games here. I'm going to go through game by game, talk about some stuff that might stick out. Pitchers are kind of my favorite thing to look at, so it'll mostly be talking about pitchers, but I'll mention hitters at the end of each game if uh, I feel that there needs to be something mentioned. So Kansas City and the Yankees, we've got Brad Keller going up against CC Sabathia. This one has some weather concerns, one of a couple games that's got weather concerns. Nothing crazy like we've dealt with earlier this week. But, um, yeah, I'm seeing 50% chance of rain. That's about as bad as it gets for tonight. Um, and, honestly, I'm not that interested in the pitchers. I think the most intriguing part of this game is the the Yankees stack and how owned it will be against the Kansas City bullpen starting out with Brad Keller Uh, I don't have Keller being very good against either hand does an okay job at limiting hard contact but these Yankee hitters are just too good I think Um, they're not even that expensive either you get Judge for 5,500 but Stanton 46 Hicks 41 Bird 41 um a little bit more expensive at the bottom of the order with Andujar 42 and Kleiber 41, but honestly, the Yankees look like one of the best stacks of the night. Love attacking them on a huge slate where ownership will likely be spread out. You've got a Coors game, so this is not a spot I think the Yankees will be over-owned, and that makes me very interested in them. All right, let's go to Mets and Pirates. Jason Vargas going up against Ivan Nova. Again, a game I'm not super comfortable rostering pitchers but uh, I can at least make a case for Nova if he sees a righty heavy lineup it looks like there's going to be four righties plus the pitcher spot for Nova here he's perfectly fine against righties he's been pretty bad against lefties over the last year plus so I like Nimmo I like Conforto and then as Drupal Cabrera I play him quite a bit so those three I think make for a nice mini stack against Nova he just has a lot of issues with lefties always has and I don't see why that would change here on the other side hitters against Vargas are in play the problem is I don't know if they'll have Elias Diaz in here Starlin Marte um, he's also a question mark but it's, if Cervelli's in he's fine 2900 against the lefty I like that a lot um, and then Josh Bell also grades out pretty well for me hitting from the right side Next game, Tampa Bay and Baltimore. Chris Archer going up against Andrew Kashner. Archer, 9,500. Kashner, 5K. Um, <clears throat> so Archer is coming off actually two really good performances. I'm super interested in Archer right here. He's 9,500, um, and he's just been very good at missing bats over his last couple starts. Uh, I sort of like to ride that while pitchers are hot. Um, I want to see them miss bats, get chases, all that good stuff. 19% swinging strike rates for Archer, his last two starts. They were not super tough matchups, Minnesota and Miami, but still noteworthy because those teams aren't like, those teams aren't Baltimore. And now he's going to get a righty heavy Baltimore team that is the worst in the league. They strike out a ton against righties. And Archer strikes out almost 30% of righty, so it just matches up. I think he's at a reasonable price tag as well. The, um, weather here is a bit concerning, so you'll have to see. Uh, but maybe that'll make him less chalky if there looks like there may be 
some weather concerns, but hopefully it clears up before close to lock. Bats in this game, really for me, it's just going to be uh, Bowers and maybe some CJ Cron uh, on Tampa Bay side against Kashner. I don't love just firing up a stack against Kashner blindly. I mean, I don't think he's great, but Tampa Bay just doesn't have very many high upside hitters, so I'm not super likely to full stack them on this huge slate with a lot of good spots. Mm. Philadelphia and Cincinnati, Nick Pavetta going up against Anthony Desclafani. Pavetta 8,200, Desclafani 5,300 on DK. Archer, uh, Archer, Pavetta is a guy that um, when he's got his stuff going, he can just mow down a lineup, um, and I never really know when that's going to be. In this game, I think there are enough options where I'm comfortable fading Pavetta uh, in, on this slate, I mean. And there's a lot of good hitters in that Cincinnati lineup. Uh, you've got Jeanette, Votto, Suarez, um, Barnhart even grades out okay for me. Duvall has power. Um, so it's not a super easy lineup, and then there's not that many strikeouts. Like I said, Pavetta can strike out double digits uh, in, in you know subpar matchups, which I think this is. But I'm expecting Cincinnati to have a pretty high run total, and that might be enough to scare me off. I do like some of those uh, Cincinnati hitters because when Pavetta doesn't have it, it can go south very quickly, as we've seen a couple times this year. So if you're looking for a full stack that's going to be pretty low owned in a good park, I think that Cincinnati makes some sense here. 80 degrees and a little bit of wind blowing out. On the other side, Desclafani doesn't grade out well for me at all against either hand and that's gonna make me want to fire up Reese Hoskins Carlos Santana I love for 3300 I mean I don't play much cash but that seems like a pretty awesome uh cash play for me is he 3300 man no 4100 sorry um I don't know why he's showing 3300 on mine um yeah he's 4100 Hoskins 4800 um it looks like I gotta up, update my spreadsheets but anyways um Santana 4100 still love that uh Nick Williams for 3900 just got some power and like I said Desclafani really struggles with hard contact almost 50 percent on the season uh below average K rate um yeah he's just one of my favorite guys to target on this slate so I'm gonna have a bunch of Philadelphia Next game, Washington and Miami. We've got Max Scherzer going up against Miami and Pablo Lopez. Scherzer, 13-9 on this slate. Uh, I don't think I'm paying for him here. Sale is four, $400 cheaper, and I like his matchup better. Sale's at home. Scherzer's on the road against this kind of pesky Marlins team. I don't think they're the worst offense in the world and he struggled against them to get strikeouts in his last start i think he might do that here you need a huge performance for 13-9 i don't know that scherzer is more likely to do that than sale is in the spot um i would assume scherzer has 15 20 percent ownership here uh if i'm way off on that then he becomes a little bit more interesting but right now i'm not on scherzer for 13-9 i am on nat's bats though against Pablo Lopez. Lopez looks good to me, uh, or I, I should say Lopez has been pretty good so far, has done a good job limiting the hard contact to righties, but not as good to lefties. Um, and then he he can get ground balls, but I just want to play this Nats team anytime I think they're going to be low-ish owned, and I think this is going to be one of those spots. Um, You've got Trey Turner for only 4,300, Matt Adams 4,200, Soto 4,600. Murphy was scratched on Thursday, so who knows if he'll be in this lineup, but Harper at 5K, Eaton 4,700. These are all guys that will be on a bunch of my lineups. I'm going to be overweight on the Nationals here once again. Twins and Red Sox, we've got Lance Lynn going up against Chris Sale. This one is pretty easy for me Lynn is awful against righties or uh I'm sorry awful against lefties struggles with walks um and the Red Sox have the best offense in the MLB so I love the Red Sox stack um 
I, it's just really tough for me not to go to them here. I know they're going to be one of the m- most chalky, but um, I'm going to be on them, especially Benintendi. Maybe he'll hit a home run. It'll actually count this time. Moreland is 4,100. That's too cheap for him. Devers, 3,500. Um, and then you've got the big bats up top, bats and JD as well. On the other side, Chris Sale is, I think, my number one pitcher on this slate. I prefer him over Scherzer. I prefer him over Kershaw and anyone else in this range. I think he's going to lead the slate in raw points. Um, Twins should have a handful of lefties in there. Even better for Sale. Not that he struggles against righties because he absolutely absolutely does not. Um, but just not much to say about Sale. He's a fantastic play. And I'm not targeting bats against him. Cleveland and Detroit, Carlos Carrasco against Mike Fires. Um, Carrasco, I don't love in this spot. I And it's more uh, because I like the other pitchers around him. Like I mentioned, Sale is my number one. And then you've got um, Archer that's 2K cheaper almost. So I think that Archer and Carrasco have the same type of upside in the spot. So I'll go with the guy that's 2K cheaper. Unless the weather is starting to look bad in Baltimore. So, I mean, I'm not hating on Carrasco. I think he's a fine play if you need someone in this range. Um, Detroit is not an offense I'm scared of. Um, But, yeah, I I just don't think I'll be getting to him very often. Fires on the other side gives up hard contact to both sides. Um, 37% to lefties. Lindor, Brantley, Ramirez, once again, make for a nice one, two, three for me. You get two uh, of the infield positions and then only use up one of your outfielders. You can even throw in Yonder Alonso or Edwin Encarnacion for a four-man stack. And uh, I'm a big fan of that tonight, uh, or I should say tomorrow night. Wind blowing out here in Detroit. It's, I think, an underrated park for hitting as well. So I love the Indian stack here against Fires, who's not very likely to make these guys miss Dodgers and uh, Braves Kershaw against Mike Fulton Nevich Kershaw's 12-8 I probably won't be getting to much Kershaw here uh, I think he's fine I think he's healthy but the strikeout upside is limited against these Atlanta bats talked about it yesterday with Rich Hill there just aren't that many strikeouts in the lineup um, you've got Freeman at 22 percent Acuna 27 percent And then Swanson, 27%. But everyone else is under 17 in this projected lineup. So it's worrisome for Kershaw. Um, If you play cash and you want to play him in cash, whatever, you can't get up to sale, that's fine. But uh, for tournaments, I'm not into Kershaw on this slate. Fulton Nevich, 9,700 is too expensive for me. Um, And the Dodgers are actually really cheap. Jock 43, Machado 45, Muncie 45, Grandal 44, Bellinger 38, Taylor 38, and Kemp 39. So, I mean, anytime the Dodgers are going to be low owned, I, I respect Fulton Evich, but um, I respect this Dodgers lineup even more. They've been raking against lefties over the last month, and those numbers are going to, or uh, against righties, those numbers are going to even go up with Machado. I mean, it just seems like another spot where you're going to get a very good team at low ownership. Uh, Wind blowing out here as well, 90 degrees. Uh, Fulton Nevich has struggled with lefty power. Seems like a pretty fun GPP spot for the Dodgers. Rangers and Astros got Giovanni Gallardo against Dallas Keuchel. Whoa, Astros, 5.7 run total in this game. Uh, did not expect it to be that high. Vegas showing very little respect for Giovanni Gallardo. It's probably because he can't miss bats, and Astros are going to put the ball in play, and you've got good hitters, and they're going to put the ball in play. I like that for MLB DFS, as most people do. Springer, Bregman, Altuve, Guriel, Reddick. That's a pretty easy top five to get to. Um, I know Springer hasn't been the same hitter as he was last year, but I have no issue going to him here against Giovanni Gallardo. Um, Just seems like a really good spot for the Astros. I don't know that I need to talk about it that much. I'm sure Josh and I will discuss their ownership tomorrow morning. Keuchel is a stay away from me. 
would much rather go to Archer at 9,500 and take what I think is double-digit strikeout upside. I think Keiko probably pitches fine here and gets a win, but I think his upside is limited for 9,100. Toronto and Chicago, the White Sox. We've got Marcus Stroman going up against Reynaldo Lopez. Stroman is actually very interesting to me. 7,300 coming off a nice start. It was against Baltimore, so, you know, whatever. But he did exactly what you would expect a good pitcher to do against Baltimore. A good righty, seven innings, seven strikeouts, uh, 14% swing strike rate. That is the second highest of the season for him. Chase rate almost 40%. So we'd love to see that out of Marcus Stroman. Now he gets another team that strikes out a ton against righties. Um, more power in this lineup. You've got Palka and Mancata. Abreu can hit righties just fine, as can Abisel Garcia. But the strikeouts can be there for Stroman. So I like him for 7,300. Um if I am targeting Stroman with someone, if he's going to be the chalk pitcher, Marcada and Palco would be my two favorite options for under 4K. But I'm not going crazy with bats um, on the White Sox side. I, I do think Stroman has a good outing here. Ronaldo Lopez for 5,600, I do not think has a good outing. Um, I love Toronto tonight. I'm, they have a five total, and they're just too cheap. They're going to be one of the chalkier um stacks on the night just because of their pricing you've got uh granderson for 3700 gary l 3500 smoke 43 that's about right i think tay oscar for 41 solarte 3600 morales under 4k um it's just for a team with a five total and those prices they're clearly underpriced they're against a bad pitcher um Reynaldo lopez on the slate has the highest xfip against both right handers and left handers uh, which is pretty tough to do when there's 30 pitchers on the slate. Um, so not a lot of respect for Reynaldo Lopez from the numbers there, and I'll be playing a lot of Toronto bats. Cubs and Cardinals, Mike Montgomery against Luke Weaver. Um, Montgomery against the Cardinals bats is kind of a write-off for me, besides um, uh, Jed Jerko, maybe, and Paul DeJong. But I don't think I'm going with the full Cardinals stack. If I'm going to a stack in this game, I think it's the Cubs against Weaver because I think Weaver is going to be jockey again. Uh, like I said, I can't figure this guy out. Swinging strikes go up and down, and it really has nothing to do with the matchups for Weaver. So he's just someone that I guess wrong on all the time, and it, it really is guessing because um, Weaver is just – Super confusing to me. I'm not going to act like I know what's going to happen with him from game to game, whereas I think a lot of other pitchers are predictable. But for whatever reason, Weaver um, is less predictable for me. So if he's going to be owned, and I would assume he will be with Coors on the slate and him being only 6,400 and him being a player people like to roster, uh, I'll target him with some Rizzo and Ian Happ and Schwarber. Um, Chris Bryant, uh, not in. You're not going to be playing in this game, of course. But uh, Wilson Contreras for 4,200, I think, makes for a fine add-on to a stack. Oakland and Colorado, Coors Field. Um, I guess I can save time on this game. So Manaya looks very good to me, but this is Coors Field. I don't expect him to have a good performance. Colorado rakes against lefties in Coors, as you'd expect. Uh, Story Arenado, two of my favorite plays on the entire night. Ionetta, one of my favorite catchers if he's in. Um, but really this entire Colorado lineup, besides maybe Noel Cuevas, um, Colorado's uh, not the best value, but I think they are my favorite stack of the night. Freeland is someone I rarely full stack against, and I think that's going to be the same here. Um, I really love Kana against him if he's batting second for 4,400. But outside of him, not crazy about Chris Davis for 5,800. Olsen's lefty, lefty. Um, Piscotti, just an 85 WRC plus. Uh, oh, I forgot about my boy Chapman. I like Matt Chapman here anytime he's against the lefty. Coors, not Coors. Um, 
and he's going to be one of the under-owned guys in the stack probably if he bats seventh. So I don't mind Chapman for 4,300. But those two guys against Freeland, I'm um, probably going to be on team fade. The A's and Coors. Seattle and L.A., we've got Wade LeBlanc and Andrew Heaney. Um, this game is super uninteresting to me. Uh, LeBlanc, someone I actually respect a little bit. I don't love the Angels against lefties in general. I know they went off against, uh, oh no, that was against Shields. Never mind, it wasn't against the lefty. I was thinking a, a couple nights ago, but anyways. Um, so Trout, firmly in play, as always, he's 6K. Um, but that's really about it on the Angels side against LeBlanc. He's just good enough at limiting the damage, creating soft contact, getting strikeouts here and there, and just doing enough to not get blown up. <clears throat> Heaney on the other side, someone I like, but not for 8,900 tonight against what I think is a pretty bad strikeout matchup for Seattle. Nelson Cruz, Mitch Hanniger in there, two guys I always look to target against lefties. I'll be doing that once again. Um, and that's going to really do it for this game. Not super pumped to use full stacks on either side. Arizona and San Diego. Zach Granke against Luis Perdomo. Granke for 10-7. Struggled in his last start against the Padres. But I'm not sure why that exactly that would be. Um, he looks fine to me. He looks healthy. Um, I, I would think he matches up really well here. 3.3 run total for... The Padres, he's coming off a 13-strikeout game against Colorado um, and now goes to a better park back-to-back -back games with 13% swinging strike rate or more. The chases are way up over the last month. So Granke grades out perfectly well for me. Um, and he and Archer, assuming the weather's okay, are going to be two guys I use in this 9,500 to 11K range a lot. Perdomo on the other side is 4,200. I would assume he's going to get some steam as the day goes on just because he's 4,200. There are a ton of great bats. Um, if Perdomo is, for whatever reason, under 10%, I think he's a fine play for me. You don't need a ton of him, or you don't need a ton out of him to make him worth it at this price if you hit on your other pitcher and you hit on your stacks. You're going to need big bats on this slate. I don't think there's any doubt about it. Pitch, pitching's not going to win you... Uh, GPPs unless someone you've got a couple guys going for 40 plus or something crazy um, I mean you need good production out of your pitchers but you need to hit on the stacks on a 15 game slate um, and Perdomo allows you to have a better chance at that so 4.4 run total for Arizona isn't great when you have your starting pitcher go up against even in this park um, he can strike out some righties but uh Arizona can roll out a pretty lefty-heavy lineup with Jay, Peralta, Lamb, Marte, Descalso. So it's not like a super easy matchup for Perdomo. He's just 4,200 and starting. I uh, kind of have a pivot. I don't know if it's a pivot. He's $1,300 more in the next game. Uh, so we can go there now. Last game of the night, we've got Milwaukee and San Francisco. Chase Anderson going up against Madison Bumgarner. Not super excited about using Bumgarner. I don't think I will be using him. Um, 9,300. I just don't see the upside with him against some of these good righties for the Brewers, um, specifically Braun and Kane. And Bumgarner's swinging strikes are still at 9% for the season, 20% K rate total, giving up a lot of hard contact. Um, three things I don't like to see out of a $9,300 pitcher. The park's great, so I won't be heavy on Brewers' bats. I'll have some Braun for 3600 against the lefty, um, as well as some Lorenzo Cain for 42 but that is about it. And then I don't think I'm going to be on many bats on the other side either because I actually like Chase Anderson, uh, um, and that's something I haven't said probably all season, maybe a couple times here and there, but... Over his last five starts, Anderson has a f near 40% chase rate, uh, swinging strike rate over 10%. Um, and it's not like these were super easy matchups as far as getting swings and misses. Cincinnati, Miami, Pittsburgh, Minnesota, and L.A., the Dodgers. So Anderson has impressed me 
and he got up to 104 pitches in his last start. Now gets an awesome park to pitch in. He's 5,500. I wouldn't expect his ownership to be super high. Um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but I like Chase Anderson, and he might find his way into the spotlight pitchers. So, um, yeah, I guess it's Chase Anderson day on a 15-game slate. Um, all right, that's going to do it for this slate. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, should be really fun. We'll have some fun in chat tomorrow morning. Uh, tune into the live stream with Chris and Josh. Check out the uh, top stack article by Osmo if you're a premium subscriber. And if you're not premium, if you're not premium, then uh, go on Osmo.com. Check out the premium tab. Sign up for the MLB package or the entire package where you get every sport. All right, guys. Good luck, and we will see you tomorrow.